and also on HoneyTree. We just got done a demo. Uh, that's why we didn't do a live tour. It kind of just like rolled right in it. But I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch it. Hopefully you can watch this whole thing in its entirety. We're taking this, saving it, and then putting it on YouTube. Also at the same time, look out for a future event on August 11th. Uh, we're going to be doing our first actual ticketed event for um, for the Summer Nosh program. So it's going to be some simple dishes, local fresh ingredients, also provided by uh, Just Organics. Uh, we're going to do a nice little mix of um, avocado toast uh, on top of some gluten-free bread. And also we're going to do huevos rancheros, which is one of my favorite dishes. I love my local fresh eggs uh, that are free-range right, uh, right on my property. Uh, then we also go up the road to, uh, what's that, um... The herb garden and we get eggs from there too so uh, looking forward to doing that so thank you again for uh, checking out the video we're looking to do a lot more uh, again also look on for YouTube it'll be under South Georgia and Brown looking to expand on that uh, so enjoy the presentation all right so I'll start the demo off just like I start all my demos by saying that you could be anywhere in the world right now viewing anything and you decided to check out this demo and to me that is a big deal must also thank uh, the honey tree for allowing me to present to you today uh, I've been working with them for the last year now uh, on educating the importance of good water uh, they were in a position where they were looking for a new filter system um, willing to expand to a new uh, new journey and uh, I kind of hit them at the right time uh, because I fell in love with this product and now I love educating everyone about uh, so it's been every day kind of coming by here, uh, talking about how to expand, how to move forward with it. And uh, now we're at the point of having the machine in the store, come in, invest into one of these gallons right here. And then from there, you tagged onto this gallon is a free month of water. After that, there will be a uh, ownership of machine consultation. Uh, we talk about how to get you involved in it, how to get involved with the business if you're interested, and at the same time, how to share this water with friends and family uh, so that they can start feeling the good, feeling the benefits from it. And after servicing uh, over 100 people this water, uh, 100 families, I should say, uh, I know firsthand what this can do for a family by changing your water, changing your life. Um, give you a little background about myself. My name is Salvatore Jambrone. I have a culinary professional background for the last 16 years. Um, I've been running kitchens, um, running, uh, running different um, styles of kitchen. And what that means is by either it could be banquets or it could be a la carte dining, all the way to catering, personal catering. I've been in the business and the industry for a very long time. So water goes hand in hand with what I've been doing uh, for the last 16 years. Uh, meaning the first thing that I do when I walk into a kitchen is I have to wash my hands and so without water um, I can't perform simple basic tasks like washing hands, cleaning cutting boards, doing dishes. I kind of let everybody have a, a, a moment to think in their head what would their life be like if they didn't have access to water. Now let's take that a step further and say what if we didn't have access to good clean water uh, and that kind of brings us to our options of what we have nowadays. Um, we're kind of limited on having good water if we're not looking for it. Right, so there's really three ways that we can acquire water. That would be either tap, right, meaning a municipality is providing you water uh, that you're paying for, uh, but do know there's a certain allowance of things that's in that water uh, that they can put in uh, that you may not know about. So that's why it's really important for you to take a step further and find out what the municipality is allowed to put in water. The one thing that I like to educate is uh, that they're allowed to put in it is chlorine. All right, so to show you what that looks like, uh, I just have some simple chlorine drops here. You get a your local uh, whole store, but that just shows you right there how chlorinated all water is. Hold on with that. So that's how chlorinated our water source is, and I'm going to put new water in here because I just like to show everybody how quickly that chlorine absorbs into your body so I'm just dipping my fingers in there so that is indicating you taking a shower going in the pool doing laundry as I put more drops in there you're show showing that there is no chlorine in there as of right now because my body absorbed it and see chlorine is a gas so that's how fast it actually absorbs into you 
right? So do you know that these municipalities have a certain allowance of what they're allowed to put in there so they can provide everybody with clean water, but at the same time, all it is is a liquid-based substance for you to do what you need to do. Um, from there, it's up to us to know to filter this stuff out. So if we're drinking it consistently uh, every day, do know that this is going to lead to some issues. So that's the first way that we can get water. The second way that we can acquire water is by either uh, a well, right, meaning wherever you live, they dig a hole, and then from there we're able to put pumps on there to pull water up to your house. Uh, but then we have to find out what's in that water. We don't know what type of uh, manufacturer was on that land before you moved in. We don't know what farmland was there, what kind of weird stuff could be in that soil, if it's lacking minerals. So we have to do our test, uh, get in touch with Cape Environmental, find out what's in that water, and then eventually uh, figure out if it's too acidic, if it's lacking minerals, and then we have to uh, filter out the bad and then leave the good in there. The third option that is becoming very popular now is the all-famous bottled water. Uh, so people know that their tap water is infected, right? See how yellow it is, right? So what they do is they invest in the bottled water. What I'm trying to pound into a lot of people's heads is the fact that you will always submit yourself to a company by continually having to buy this bottled water. So you can buy cases and cases and cases of it, but you will always use it. You'll always need to buy it. So you need to have ownership of your water. That is the biggest thing in the world. So when I see people drink bottled water, I know that that person is not in control of their water situation. The three other reasons why I detest bottled water. The one main one is that bottled water goes through what's called a purification process. What that means, it goes through either reverse osmosis, distill, vapor distilling, um, UV light. The idea is to take out whatever could be in there and then leave you with this very dead acidic water. But we have this um, understanding that mountain spring water is unbelievable right that's why we reach towards our fiji is because water is bouncing off of uh, uh the going down the mountain bouncing off on a rock and sand and it's collecting these beautiful minerals that this world has to offer us right but then when it goes through that purification process it's stripped of that and if we know that water loves to absorb things loves to soak things up if it's dead and acidic from the beginning, right, because it was stripped of everything, then every sip that you take of bottled water is ultimately depleting you and dehydrating you. Yes, you heard me correctly. I just said that every sip you take, you are constantly dehydrating yourself. So you are never hydrating yourself with bottled water. That is the first and most important thing is that you're hurting yourself with every sip. The second one is that we don't know where they exactly got this water or where they uh, dug a hole and they were able to uh, start uh, uh, producing into the water, bottled water world or industry. So this water was ultimately meant for somebody else and then that company decided to uh, put it in some type of pretty plastic bottle and sell it to you conveniently. So you can put it in your purse, put it in your car, but that water was ultimately taken from a water source beyond yours or your own or where you live. So it was taken from somebody else just to produce that almighty dollar. So we're hurting ourselves with every sip and then we're hurting somebody else consistently by investing into these companies that are doing this. The third would be the actual vessel that it's in. It's in a plastic reusable container, right, that they say is reusable, but most likely it's done in a, a container that, what you see, this is made from petroleum, so whatever this container is, it is ultimately leaking into your water source. So do know that this sat in the sun, sat on the pallet for, could be eight months to two years before it reached your refrigerator, right? So it's old, dead, infected, acidic water. So that right there is enough for you to say, hey, I'm not going to invest into another plastic container that's just winding up in our Pacific Ocean. There's a vortex that is forming, and it is our fault. So next time you reach for a straw, next time you reach for a bottle, do know that it's most likely not going to be recycled. It's going to wind up in a hole or in a landfill or landfill or in, in the water. So it's a big deal of what we're doing. So there's a lot of negative that we're doing with investing into this bottle of water. Another reason, right, let's go into hurting ourselves when we talked about acidic. So most people uh, hear this word, kind of know what it means, 
but let me really define it for you, right? So when you talk about acidic or even alkaline, right, you're talking about something called pH, right? pH is short for potential hydrogen. So it's a measurement of the amount of abundance of positive hydrogen in something. If there's an abundance of it, then that is going to be acidic. Is there, if there's a lack of it, then that's going to be considered alkaline. So man said, let's make this easy. Let's put some numbers to it, right? So this is what they came up with. So they said zero to 14 will be the measurement of pH scale, right? So half of 14 is seven. So that means it's going to be neutral. Anything below seven is going to be considered acidic, all right? So if you're testing a pool, right? And you see that pool is about 4.5 acidic, that means that you have to add minerals, sorry about the phone there, to raise its pH to a more swimmable level. Anything above seven is considered alkaline. Now from the research that I've done, and the research that you should do, by reading books like this, right, you'll find out that our bodies Contrary to what a lot of people say, that we should be pH balanced, we actually should be slightly alkaline. So my research, right, that I looked up, why? Why does our body want to be slightly alkaline? Well, my research led me to this gentleman right here of a Dr. Otto Warburg. In 1931, he made an unbelievable discovery stating that alkaline, right, and, and acidic for the body, alkaline has proved to be a better state to be in to fight off disease, cancer, and sickness. So all those negative things need an acidic, oxidative environment. So that's why we're consistently told over and over again that we need to be in an antioxidant realm, right? We need to be consuming antioxidants. Doctors will say that fresh fruits and vegetables are the way to go to get your antioxidants. But then when you educate them on, hey, saying, uh, I, I, I've been turned on to this alkaline water, they want to say no, 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 no. And we're going to talk about why they say the no, 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 but they're not going to kind of answer you because they don't even know why. It's just programmed in their head not to do that. But the reality is, is that our bodies actually need to be in a slightly alkaline phase for us to be able to limit the amount of sickness limit the growth of cancer, which is taking over this country, right? It's second in the top most ways to die in this country, right? Next to heart disease. Cancer is taking over because there's so many things that can implement in us. From the food that we eat, from too much sunlight, right? From staring at our phones too long. It's all this, it's keeping us in this oxidative, very high free radical zone that our body doesn't need to be in. So that's why I'm educating where if you were to drink higher up on that scale, you have a better chance of alleviating your body from being in that cancerous and oxidative realm, right? That's why ownership of the machine, you're able to control your pH all day with the hit of a button. And we're gonna go more into that. But talking about pH to show you what it looks like, right? So I have some bottled water here. We're gonna start with Aquafina, and then we're gonna go right to the top. And then we'll go to the, uh, the the famous Fiji, which I know a lot of people drink, thinking that this is fantastic water. And I'm going to teach you or show you how it's just basically glorified tap water when they put it in this plastic bottle, and it just the water quality deteriorates as soon as they put it in here. To the jokers out there saying that they're serving alkaline water, which they really are. But the question is, is how did they raise the pH of the water? You see, you got to understand when you're changing the molecular structure of water, right? That's one way. Another way is to add things to water to raise the pH, just like the pool, like I was telling you before. And then all the way to our Kangen water, which we have here at the store now, so people can try and then eventually invest in the machine themselves. So these are pH drops. Remember, this is showing the measurement of whether there's an abundance of positive hydrogen to a least amount of positive hydrogen. So obviously you see the color change on there. So Aquafina, a company that has decided just to serve you dead acidic purified water. So anytime you see those no-name bottles, when you go to uh, Walmart or anything, know that it is just purified water, dead water, nothing in it, no minerals, no nothing. 
right? And then you have tap water, right? The government deems our tap water to be neutral, so that's why it's going to be your greenish color, 7.0 on that pH scale, right? Fiji, slightly higher on the alkaline scale, right? But again, this may be naturally sourced Fiji water, but as soon as they put it in that bottle, it destroyed all the positive qualities that Fiji water has to offer you. Right, then yeah. the Essentia, right? So they're saying that it's higher on that scale, which it is, you can obviously tell, but the question is, sorry about the background right there, but the question is, is how did they re raise the pH scale? Hey, to whoever's on there, thanks for watching, appreciate it, All right? How did they raise the pH of this to make it alkaline? Well, they tell you, first thing, purified water. So wherever they got this water, it looked like this after they purified it, and then they added sodium bicarbonate in it. Does anybody out there know what sodium bicarbonate is? It's baking soda. So they just added baking soda to this. Now there has been a lot of videos that I've watched that says switching or putting baking soda to raise the pH of your water is going to be better to keep you out of that alkaline, keep you in that alkaline environment. But at the same time, the continual drinking of water, which we need to do, right? We need to be drinking water all day. That baking soda in your body is not going to be good. It's going to add to calcification of your liver, plus problems with your bones. Please do your research and find out whether I'm saying is BS or not. Consistently consuming baking soda on the level of how we should be drinking water is not a good idea. And plus they added in those other minerals, the potassium, magnesium, sodium, right, and calcium. Those other minerals we need and it's naturally occurring in water, they just re-added it to it to raise the pH. So it was only to make a buck. That's it has nothing to do with your health. It's only because the fab is there now for people to think like this. So that's why I'm introducing a natural way to raise pH, right? And that's through a process called electrolysis. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. Because the question is, how did we, how does this machine change the molecular structure of water to raise or lower its pH? Well, it does this by putting it through a conductor, right? So the first thing that we have to do to water is filter it. So a lot of people say to me, hey, I'm just interested in a filter. Great. There's a filter in there. Yes, the most important thing to do is to filter the water. So I'll show you how the process works. First, the water must be filtered, right? So the water goes through the filter to take out stuff like this, your chlorine, your fluoride, Right? Any type of uh, impurities that are found in water, yes, must be filtered out. So that's the first thing that it does. After that, it goes through a conductor. In this case, this machine has three solid titanium plates. And we're going to talk more about the, 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 the benefits of using solid as opposed to these mesh and hybrid screens out there that you will have to do your research and decide whether or not you want to invest into them. I have found out that the solid is way better for conducting what we're about to do. So the water passes through these plates, solid titanium, and then we recreate what Mother Nature does naturally because alkaline water is naturally occurring throughout the world, right? So we have to recreate that. So we have the filtering, we have the aeration, we pass it through the conductor. The one thing we're missing is that a lightning bolt. So now we've electrically charged this water. When you do that, this is what happens. So we all know water as H2O, right? That's two hydrogen and one oxygen. When you electrically charge water, it changes to this. And it carries a little bit of charge. So what we did was we separated gases now. We have what's called now is a free active hydrogen. With that free active hydrogen, Right? We're able to incorporate antioxidants. That's what that negative energy is called. So now freely, all day, with the hit of a button, you are creating antioxidants. As opposed to you getting up, going to the store, consuming all these leafy green vegetables, which you definitely need part of your diet, and hoping that it's the closest from what it's been picked, right? Because that's when we should be eating or consuming our produce is when it's right picked, because as soon as you pluck it, it's what? oxidizing. It's losing that freshness. It's losing its antioxidant charge. That's why we wait for produce to get ripe so we can eat it. But in reality, it's not ripening. It's 
dying. It's just easier consumable because we can't bite into a hard mango. We have to wait, right? But the reality is it's at its firmest, freshest peak when it's hard as a rock. It's, that means it's at its strongest. We have to wait for it to start oxidizing slowly so we can actually consume it. Does that make sense? Are we connecting that? Ripe mean, means it's not ready to eat, means that it's dead enough for us to consume. Again, please do your research, right? So now, so now we've created smaller water, right? Because regular H2O looks like this, two hydrogen, one oxygen, and we electrocute it and we turn it to this. We've separated. So think about it like this. Picture your body as a chain link fence, right? And if, if picture water, I don't know, like a tennis ball. So for you to hydrate yourself, you'd throw this tennis ball at the chain link fence, the water the, the, the water of the tennis ball would get what? Either stuck or it'd bounce off. So you're never really able to hydrate it like these jokers are doing because the gases are too close together. But once you separate it, if your body's that chain link fence and you throw a golf ball, you have a better chance of hydrating your body that way by making it smaller. You're making these gases smaller. So you have, now you have rapid hydration, you have water that's molecularly structured differently to actually um, hydrate you on a cellular level. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So for anything, anything itis, diverticulitis, arthritis, these are things that are going to potentially help with that as much as other things too because this is just a puzzle piece towards healing, towards feeling better, right? Because most of us are dabbling in this oxidative, dead environment, especially by the food that we're eating. Now on top of that, the water that we're drinking. All right, so I hope this makes sense. If anybody has questions, please message me directly or come to the meetings that we have here every Wednesday and sat or every other Wednesday or Saturday. So it's Saturday now, and the next one will be Wednesday, and then Saturday and Wednesday. It's going to go back and forth from there. But I hope that this makes sense, and we're going to go a step further now on how it uh, uh, hydrates you on a cellular level. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you definitely do your research on this so you can come back with a buttload of questions um, that I can't wait to answer for you. But again, invest in this book this is how cancer is is, is is making its way to a lot of people's lives how it's affecting people uh, hold on one sec I'm just going to check something here okay very good alright so great book he is not actually a doctor all he is is just a, a curious dude that did his research and the whole book is riddled with doctor testimonies um, and, and this is one thing that I learned because there's a whole chapter in here about Kangen water, right? Where it's the whole chapter of explaining it, and then at the very end of the chapter, he actually talks about the Kangen water. He says that's this is what I'm talking about. But he encourages you, just like I do, to do your research. But do know that there's no internet police. People can lie on there, and they will. But most of the testimonies that you'll see on there from alkalized water is going to be from the SD501 Kangen water machine. So this is what it does. What this water can do to your body on a cellular level. But let's backtrack. Let's say you're drinking and eating all this acidic food, right? So now we're in an acidic environment with our cell. The cell consists of negative and positive energy. There's certain things that are in your cell that needs to do its job, right? Like we need to take in certain things and we need to spit out certain things. But what happens is if you're dabbling in this acidic environment, we have an abundance of positive hydrogen that negative, that negative energy is going to diminish. There's going to be too much positive hydrogen to the point that that cell wall is going to be imbalanced and it's going to break down. Now that cell wall gets really hard and sticky, kind of like on the side of a fryer. So now it can't take in what it needs, it can't take out what it needs, so that cell becomes sick. And what do we know about cells? They like to what? Multiply, divide, multiply, divide. So if we have the multiplication of a sick cell, that's going to equal a tumor. And that's how cancer starts. Does this make sense? This is a very simple way to put it down and put it into uh, terms that a lot of people would understand of how uh, a sick cell turns into cancer. 
it's the multiplication of a diseased sick cell where if we kept it more in a natural neutral or alkaline environment we'd have a better chance for this not to happen because this is what it look like. So this is incorporating, let's say, regular H2O, right? Dead, acidic, oxidative water. If we flip the paradigm, right, and we incorporated electrically reduced, separated water with this active hydrogen, which is an antioxidant, this is what the cell would look like. Well, now we have an influx of antioxidants. That negative energy with the body needs, right? Remember, go back to what you think the normal doctors are saying. Antioxidants rule, oxidation rules. Oxidative, antioxidant. Right now, our cell wall has its up in charge. The water has been separated and small enough to actually hydrate you on that cellular level. So we have the antioxidants that we need. We have smaller constructed water as opposed to this big clustered water that's like this regular H2O. So now you're able to detox on a cellular level, keep your body in an alkaline state, at the same time you're hydrating rapidly all day. This is why you have people that have those itis problems, diverticulitis, can't, uh, um, arthritis, they have these inflammatory problems that this helps with because it's able to suppress it. And on top of that, the main thing out of all of it, because everybody knows we need to filter their water, you're drinking good, clean, filtered water. So let's say you start drinking this water, you don't feel crazy. And you know, I've had a lot of people, I don't feel anything different. I don't feel different. That's okay. You still have to remember the fact that you're drinking good, clean water. And that's what we need. We don't need to be drinking this oxidative, chlorine and rich water. So now here's your chance to own that, right? So again, I hope this makes sense. I hope you're able to uh, ask some questions. Reach out to me. Reach out to Ruth from the Honey Tree. Uh, we're here to answer your questions that you have with it. And on top of that, please keep a lookout for every Saturday and Wednesday. Every other Saturday and Wednesday, we're doing demos here at the Honey Tree. And also, August 11th, we will be doing our uh, cooking demo here. Our Summer Notch program is going to be first of many. We're looking to do classes on just dressings, just appetizers. Uh, just a, a tapas menu. We're looking to do all different types of things. Very excited about what we're doing. So again, I hope this makes sense. Oxidative, antioxidant, right? So alkaline, right? The difference of big water and electrically reduced water, right? So we're going to talk a little bit further about the electrically reduced water. So, so regular water, right? Regular H2O, Right, looks like this. Right? But you gotta remember, through water, there's not just one oxygen and hydrogen uh, gases that are in together. There's anywhere from 16 to 20 of these hydrogen oxygen molecules bunched together, about 16 to 20, and there's a lot of them that's flowing in water. Right? It's all these gases. When you electrically reduce and separate these gases out, then you have the antioxidant and separate water on an 8.5. Remember that scale, right? 7 being neutral. If we were starting on an 8.5, those gases will be anywhere from 10 to 12 gases bunched together. So already we're a step above regular water. Right, so if we increase electric charge, right, we're actually going to go down on the scale because we're going, um, well, we're going to go down on the size of it, even though we're going higher up on that scale, right, we're going nine, we're cleaving off more hydrogen. So it's going to be anywhere from an eight to ten amount of clustered gases. And then as we increase electric, again, we're up to a 9.5 level on that scale. We've made the gases even smaller. As we keep cleaving off more hydrogen, we're increasing the amount of antioxidants. Does that make sense? So as you hit a button, you go higher on that alkaline scale, you're incorporating less positive hydrogen, which is inc increasing the amount of negative hydrogen. And the negative hydrogen is your antioxidants, which we should be consuming on a daily basis. Thank you for joining, whoever just jumped in. Appreciate it. It's, it's Peg. Hey, Peg. Right? So now on a 9.5 level, the water is so small, we're, we're, we're detoxing on that cellular level, incorporating tremendous amount of antioxidants. 
but we could go a step further and actually go 11.5. Now think about someone who's desperately sick that needs to detox on a cellular level at a rapid rate. If you were drinking higher on that scale where the gases were so small with such amount of abundance of negative uh, antioxidants in it, you're going to do some really good things. It's going to be a very important puzzle piece as opposed to you going to the doctor, picking up a prescription, taking all that time in between of not knowing what's happening to you, right? Increasing the stress level and then taking something that's just causing another issue and maybe helping or masking what's wrong with you now. But then on top of that, it's only prolonging whatever is ailness in you. So that's why coming to the honey tree, fixing your water, starting with a solid foundation are these little puzzle pieces that one needs to do for ultimate healing. But again, we all need to be drinking water, so it needs to be the best water. Let that sink in for a second. Take a minute. All right, now come on back. So again, as we increase electric charge, we're cleaving off or separating more gases to create antioxidants and make smaller water so we can hydrate on that cellular level. Again, I hope this makes sense. Any questions, please reach out to me. Please reach out to Ruth. This is achievable for everybody to have in their home, and I believe it's necessary for everybody to have in their home. And we're going to talk a little further about what you can do with these other pHs. Like I said before, having 16 years in the culinary world and how important regular water is, let's deal with regular but good water. Right? And if you deal with these other pHs, we could actually disinfect bacteria. That's 99.999% bacteria. And as a chef, I am required to pour, uh, purchase or order bleach, disinfecting agents, because I deal with bacteria. Now, if you tell a chef that he can hit a button or she could hit a button and produce liquid that could kill bacteria on contact, that is a big, big deal to me because I constantly have to buy bleach or disinfectant, go to Sam's, go to BJ's, uh, order from Cisco, cases, $1,200 worth of stuff that is hurting me, hurting the environment, and it's in another plastic bottle. When I can reuse a plastic bottle and put 2.5 acidic water in it, we'll talk more about that, that could kill bacteria on tog tag, right? But again, I hope this makes sense. If this is interesting to you, please come out to either a Wednesday or Saturday demo. The more people that come to it, the more that we'll have the demos. And now it's requiring us to do Wednesdays and Saturdays because of the interest in people learning how to change their water, change their life. And on top of that, we're doing cooking demos now that, are, that the first one's going to be on um, August 11th, 11 o'clock, Summer Notch program. Come on out. All right. So let's move on to the next step, and that's going to be those other pHs, right? The one way that I could show you how this water will penetrate you on that cellular level is to show you what 11.5, very high alkaline, I put it in this vinegar container just to let me know that this is cleaning, but at the same time, it can be used medically as well. And this is what it looks like. So this is regular sesame oil, right, that you can get from the stores, right? We all know that regular oil and water, right, do not mix. I don't need to show you, but I'm gonna. So we know that we know that it doesn't mix. But why doesn't regular water and oil mix? It's because the hydrogen and oxygen gases that are found in water is too clumped together for it to ever emulsify. But when you take electrically reduced and separated gases, right? It has the capability to emulsify with it. It'll actually mix with it. So that right there is like a dressing. When you take oil and vinegar, mix it together, you get a dressing. It's the same technique. Now imagine owning water that can actually break the molecular bonds of oil. As a chef, again, that's a big deal because I deal with grease, fire, and I deal with bacteria all day. So now I can have a degreaser with the hit of a button. It's a big deal. And all it is is 11.5 water. So when I do my dishes at home, I do not use Dove soap or whatever, whatever, I don't know if it's Dove, whatever soap that comes in a bottle, it's thick and it's colored, looks like you should drink it, right? I don't use that stuff anymore. I, I fill up whatever container it is with hot water, regular well water that I have, and I put 11.5, a cup of 11.5, and I put two capfuls this is the next pH we're going to talk about, 2.5 acidic water, and it's kind of backwards on your screen, but 
So 2.5 water is also called hypochloric acid, which I know that may sound scary to you, but the fact is, is that this water is oxidizing so strong, oxidizing on a level of soda, but oxidizing even more that it could kill 99.999999% bacteria. So I wish you can kind of smell it because it does smell chlorinated. It does smell bleachy. So again, washing dishes at home, hot water, 11.5, two capfuls of this, and there you go, I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to rock with cleaning dishes. Never again will I have to go to Target to get some all-natural plant-based cleaner when I'm literally hitting a button and producing it. So you become the own manufacturer of your own pH to be able to medically keep yourself healthy, right? And if you are sick, be able to detox quicker and on top of that, be able to use these other pHs to clean with. So if I owned, uh, let's say, a, a, um, a cleaning company, Imagine how many cases of stuff. Without that disinfecting or cleaning agent, you're not in business anymore because that's what you need to clean. You never go to Sam's or BJ's ever again. You hit a button and you refill bottles. That's it. So this is a, a no-brainer in my head on how to actually live a more healthier life, a more natural life by, by knowing that I can electrically charge water and use it to how to keep my family right clean, how to keep my house clean by just using different pH water. And we all have the capability of owning one of the one of these. We just have to know about it and then have an agent that's willing to walk hand in hand with you and teach you how to take get the maximum power out of what you're doing here. Right? So on a pH level, you have ownership now of 11.5 to 2.5. So you have your drinking water, you have your neutral water, and then you have your acidic water, right? Your acidic water, is, some people would say, why would you want to drink acidic water? 6.0 acidic water actually resembles rainwater. So by hit of a button, you produce rainwater. Guess what, you, guess what your plants like? They like 6.0 water, right? It resembles it, and you hit it with, with a hit of a button, right? So these are the things that I would teach and help you with, right, here at the store, and also I, I would help you install it and everything. It doesn't take a lot. It goes right to your faucet head. It, there's under-counter devices if you like to, right? So we're here to help you with that. But why did I choose this machine? Why did I choose the Enagic brand that's been around for 46 years, and then they were around another 20 years before that, before they made a smaller model to fit on your counter? That's right, this company first uh, derived from an in-house home whole system but you're talking 60 80 grand for something like that and it's just not possible for most people to uh, afford that so they said let's make it smaller let's make it cuter and let's be able to put it right on your counter so you can hit a button right then and there and produce the best drinking water to the best cleaning agent that's out there and all that is is just changing the black gases of water so there's some things you have to look at when investing into a water ionizer because there's many of them out there and a lot of them are lying to you about how they make their machine they're saying it's american made i guarantee you it's not what that means is that they've outsourced it to different companies so they might get this part from korea they might get this part from germany germany but what happens when that company is no longer around anymore and they can't get that part and they haven't gotten another company to provide them with it so if you own one of these and that happens there goes your warranty so what are they going to say? Yeah, you invested in an $800 ionizer, but now you got to spend another $1,200 for another machine because they don't make that part for it anymore. So they came out with another machine. It's a hook. That's all it is is a hook. This company, the machines have not changed. You'll never see them go on sale. That's not how this works. It's the price of it. It's legit. And that's what we're here to discuss with you to make sure that it financially, uh, um, financially makes sense for you and your family. But three things are the most important with this ionizer or looking at any ionizer. Number one is how are we conducting this water, right? There's no moving parts in this machine besides the water itself, right? So the most important things are going to be what's changing the structure. That would be the actual conductor, which I talked about earlier, which is titanium. We're going to talk about that. The power source, the abundance of energy that we need to cleave off hydrogen. And then the third, the cleaning. And we've mastered all that, so let's talk about that, right? So we have what's called a solid titanium plate. And this isn't just go on Amazon and order titanium, right? This is $2,200 worth of titanium going through your machine, right? And that's not the cost of all of them, right? But you're talking $2,200 an ounce 
because it's the perfect titanium. If you ask, if you talk with any uh, metal worker, you talk to any artist that likes to work with stones or metal or anything, they will say to you that titanium is the best metal to work with, right? The best to work with, right? Because of its uh, capability to be able to uh, either either uh, carry on that charge and then afterwards it has to be safe for us to drink. So if you went and, and passed water through lead and then electrocuted it, you would get ultimately bleach. We cannot consume that. But with this, because it's titanium surgical medical grade, we can. So we decided to, to, to use what's called a solid titanium plate. It is huge. It's the size of the machine. And with this one, you get three of them. The one that I've invested in, you get seven. Seven huge titanium plates, right? So now the, the other competitors, they made what's called the mesh screen. So when Anaji came to America about 10 years ago, even though they've been around for 46 years, right? This is where America started. Oh, you're gonna fill up a gallon. Yeah. This is where they see yeah, This is where they started with theirs just so they can be in the ionizer industry. So the mesh screen, no lie, that's the size. And on top of that, they rob you of titanium, right? Now, for those of you out there who understand how electricity works, this actually doesn't sound too bad because you have different points of contact to raise electric charge. Sounds fantastic. But at the same time, when you cleave hydrogen off of these gases, you get a byproduct called hydroxide or a calcium buildup. It's, it's a byproduct of splitting hydrogen. It's kind of like when you start a fire, right? You have the wood, you have the smoke, and you have the fire. Think of the smoke like hydroxide. Think of the fire like the antioxidants or oxidation that you can achieve from it. So you're going to get that buildup of that calcium, kind of like when you do dishes in a dishwasher, right? You get that film. Same theory that's going to clog your plates and if you don't know or you weren't taught or you don't have an agent to help you keep your machine clean they're going to scorch and burn on you and then we have a problem because you just lost what anywhere between four and eight hundred dollars and on top of that if you drank that you can get hurt so they said well we can't do this anymore they said how can we do what an adjunct's doing but save money so they decided to go a little bit bigger and then go with what they call the hybrid, or they maybe have little dots in them. That's still robbing you of titanium, only so they could save money, make it a cheaper price, and then they can acquire more money, right? But again, the same thing is gonna happen. These plates are gonna clog, and then they're gonna scorch and burn. And if anything, if this gets clogged and burned, then you have the solid plate. So let's just start with the, the best product to begin with, right? Just as a chef, I'm always looking for better quality ingredients. This is the better quality ingredient as opposed to the manipulation of the industry, which really is gonna cost you and your own health and your wallet later on. So you might be thinking you got a deal right now, but in the future you invested in to what I like to call a POC. Think about it for a second. What would it be? Piece of crap? A piece of crap. A piece, yeah, a piece yeah, of crap. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's not go into a piece of crap. Let's invest into something that's going to last you a long time. These machines have been known to last anywhere between 25 to 30 years with proper maintenance. That's pretty awesome, right? So we get this. We crushed it with the titanium plates in the industry. Next, the power source. So there's two different trains of thought with the power source, right? We have what's called a transformer. And then we have what's called an SMPS, a switch mode power source. This is the difference, all right? They're saying that the transformer is old school energy. But it's funny how I get older, I like the stuff that's from a long time ago. My dress, my music, anything that's coming out now is all about what? Just making that, but jipping you. That's what this is right here, and I'm going to show you why. All right, transformer means you plug it into your wall. There's coils that collect energy to be able to keep the energy source consistent of cleaving off more hydrogen. So if you were to measure antioxidants by a numerical number, right, negatives are gonna be good in this case because we're talking about antioxidant. If you're talking about oxidative, that would be positive. This is called an ORP scale, oxidation reduction period. So negative good. For an example, green tea. A Couple years ago, we thought green tea was the most antioxidant rich, right? 
but on a numerica scale, on an ORP, it's only like a negative 67. This water, produced on a 9.5 level, is a negative 400. So way more antioxidants. And with the transformer, you're able to keep that negative 400 consistent the whole time. So if I have a sick family member, or if I'm trying to maintain good health, would I like to have consistent cleaving of hydrogen and antioxidants, or an inconsistent? I'll show you what I mean by that. So it plugs into the wall. There's a power source, right? Of a, of a, a ramping up, just an energy source. You have a baseline of where it knows it needs to cut itself off. So it's a ramping up of energy, hitting it and then kicking off. A ramping up and then kicking off. I get it where it sounds like it's a power saver. Trust me, I get it. But here's the reality. You're cleaving off hydrogen. You're creating antioxidants. If you're at that negative 400 at the mark, now you just lost it. And now you have to recoup. So maybe you had it here, but then maybe you're only at a 350. And then later on, maybe you're only at a 200. It's going to be inconsistent, especially over the course of time, because this is going to burn out on you. As opposed to a simple way of harboring energy, right? Building it up and then keeping it mainstream. So when you shut this machine off, right it's off now it's actually still spitting out water in a dispenser because we created energy it saved it right it charged it up so it's like you, one of those ramp up flashlights so you tramp it tramp it tramp it tramp it tramp it and then you let it go and then you got consistent energy because it's based off a of currency that you created as opposed to a door to a direct currency that's going to lose its energy so again right if i have a sick family member or if i'm sick and i'm trying to produce antioxidant rich water do I want consistent energy or inconsistent energy? Again, I leave it up to you to do your research, but you're gonna find, once you dig a little farther, after looking at many of those charts where they have the list of ionizers, there's two important things to look on there. And that's going to be the titanium plates and the power source. And the Enagi company crushes it every time. Let that sink in, come on back. All right, so I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, Please reach out to me. Reach out to Ruth from the Honey Tree, right? This is what we do. We educate uh, the do's and don'ts, and we educate of the myths that are out there with these other companies and expose the truth of the Enagic Company, also known as Kongen Water. So if you're interested to see more on this, uh, every other Saturdays and Wednesdays, we do classes here at the Honey Tree. Please also keep a lookout for the August 11th uh, cooking demo. It's going to be called the Summer Nosh. We're doing avocado toast, gluten-free bread. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's only $10 a ticket, so you're basically getting courses and courses of food for $10. It's the best deal that I've found. Right? The third most important thing with this machine is how to clean it. All right? Our machines come with two awesome things. It comes with this and this. So this is a year supply of cleaning. All it is is citric acid. And then this is a reusable filter. So this filter comes out, this goes into here, you put it in there, you shut the machine completely off, you cycle that citric acid through the machine, you take both hoses, put it in a cup, you fill up that cup with, it, with that citric acid, and now it's sitting in the machine and you walk away. Right, let it sit overnight, you come back the next day, you flush it out really good, and you're ready to rock. Do that once a month, twice a month, depending on how much water you go through. Right? It, it, it all depends on what you go through. I have continually flushed out 40 gallons of water through my machine for a majority of anywhere between 6 to 8 to a year. I've been pumping 40 gallons out of my machine. So the SD501 is the best machine out there that can handle it and give you the lifetime of your actual machine. Seven plates is where it's at. But again, it comes with a reusable filter. The only thing you have to keep up off of that is citric acid, and it comes with a year supply right off the bat. Now, the other question I'm sure you're asking me because we keep talking about filters is, how long does the filter last? Well, then I have to come back to you and say, well, how much water are we going to pass through it? The machine is always counting 3,500, right? So we can take one filter, can yield you 3,500 gallons of filtered good water. Then after that, we're ready to go with the, uh, with the next one. They're about 100, 110 bucks, but again, they last anywhere averagely between eight to 12 months out of the year. I see a question on there. All right, what level of pH is good for phenolite? Okay, 9.5, you can start with 8.5 and then build them up. Um, they're talking about for animals or pets. I'll tell you one pet that does love this, well, if you have one. Horses, horses love 
electrically reduced water. Uh, there's a book online I highly recommend. I don't think I have it in my little satchel down there, uh, but it is uh, a regimen if case, in case they do get sick on how to actually incorporate other pHs, but you can start them no problem on an 8.5 level just like yourself when you own the machine, then work your way up and hold yourself at that 9.5. Now some people would say, isn't that really high alkaline? You gotta um, think about this, your body is gonna go towards that oxidative realm, so it's our job to consistently keep it at that neutral, slightly alkaline stage. It's the same thing for the animals. Uh, I had one customer uh, that had a dog, uh, had a dog and uh, had really bad bowel system, had, had, uh, had issues with uh, urinating, not going to the bathroom, going to the bathroom too much, hurt, uh, the dog was in pain. From the first gallon, it was 9.5 of this water, the dog licked the bowl religiously and then ran outside. Normally its urine was uh, very dark brown. This was, it went from there to a very uh, slightly yellow like the way that it should be. Um, so it was very awesome to see how it does help uh, uh, felines or, or animals or dogs or whatever it is. Um, I do have a, um, a beagle. She drinks 9.5 all day, no problems. She does have a throwing up issue. We have seen less of that ever since we've incorporated electrically reduced water. And it's kind of funny uh, because we had it for like eight, nine months in <laughs> the machine and we never even thought to give it to our pet. And then finally, like I looked at my mother-in-law uh, and I was like, are you giving the dog 9.5? And she said, oh my God, I'm not. And as soon as she gave that to it, we saw a dramatic change uh, in the dog's health. It's just that one little puzzle piece. Uh, but again, do your research on that. Actually, I think, here, there is a statement from uh, an actual vet that says that it does help uh, with that. Hopefully I can find it without becoming too annoying. Uh, I will show you this though. Uh, this is what it looks like, molecularly constructed. This is big water and this is smaller water. So if you can read that real quick, pretty interesting. Um, I will show you, where is it? So this is Dr. Uh, Dr. Shinya, huge, huge advocate for alkaline-based and magic Congan water. Uh, these are just some of the, he's the co-inventor of the colonoscopy. He's done, where is it, 370,000, <laughs> right, colonoscopies, co-inventor. These are pictures of, uh, kind of gross, but different colons, just by incorporating the Congan water and changing the diet a little bit, right? Uh, was it, smoker, see the difference? And then hopefully I'm getting to the uh, the veterinarian. I think it's the next page. Here you go. Pets love common water. So if you could read that real quick, I'll kind of. Yeah, it's bad light. There you go. So pretty cool. I'm gonna pull it away in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, good. So we all get it. All around, it's pretty awesome, right? All it takes is just a step to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna invest into this uh, because what's the alternative? The alternative is, is investing into this crap the rest of your life, right? Or just buying a filter and just producing, yes, uh, just producing just filtered water. Remember, just filtered water is just going to be that 7.0, right? Which is just neutral. But if our bodies are consistently staying in that oxidative realm, that neutral water is actually going to be acidic to us. We need to be drinking more often than not an alkaline-based diet, either by eating or drinking or the combination of both. I hope that makes sense, right? So I've been educating uh, for about a year and a half now the importance of switching your water, owning a pH scale. Uh, it's led me to over almost over 20 machines invested in families, and now I have other business partners that are looking to teach people, and this is just for the side, right? They do this on the side, so they have their normal career that they're rocking out in, and then they're able just to introduce the water uh, to, to some, some local families or anything like that. Uh, we got another question on here. Um, it does. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Good. All right. So uh, you can make a, a, a business out of this where if you do refer something to some machine, the company will send you a referral check. They do not advertise. So the amount of money that would normally go into these other companies for advertising, they have, they have said, hey, we're going to hold on to that and we're gonna be able to offer it to any agent that looks like they wanna create a business out of this. So for myself, my family, the extra income helps us out a lot. Anything that I make from this goes into an investment to be able to go to my kids for their future, either by a car, 
uh, or, or for school, whatever they choose, I need to make sure that they are taken care of in the future, but it has to start now so we can build that wealth. Uh, and that's another thing that I talk about with my agents is please do not just depend on your daily uh, normal job to be able to just pay your bills. We have to start thinking about the future. Start indoctrinating yourself with other motivational speakers. Tony Robbins out there. Uh, I listen to a lot of him. Robert Kiyosaki. I listen to these guys uh, because they have a different mentality towards taking care of their family. And this is just another way to do it where it's not really that hard. You don't have to hit it hard like I do. It's just a matter of sharing the water with people. Uh, and over a while, I guarantee they're going to be texting you. Hey, man. Are you around today? Just uh, gonna swing by and pick up some water for me because it's what happens. I, I, I get them all day. Um, people drive to my house to pick this up because they feel good from it. They know that it's different. They know that it's important. The next step after that is to grow up and be a big boy and big girl and invest in the machine yourself. And again, tag along with it as an agent. There's warranties on the machine. There's all types of things and make sure that we can take care of this thing. Uh, there's a um, in Queens, New York. There's also uh, the uh, the Enagic store in Queens really really cool spot uh, you could definitely go in there and get your machine serviced it's like 40 bucks they'll, they'll deep clean it four hours later you got a brand new machine if something breaks on it, you could bring it there you could also ship it to them you're gonna be without a machine for a while but hopefully you come to uh, you know you're more than welcome to come to um, honey tree and invest in some gallons and then you could fill up for the length of time it's there or you can come and fill up here if you like we also have uh, we're looking to get filters in here um, we do have the bottles for sale too, so you can hold on to your 2.5 and 11.5 and we'll teach you how that works too. But uh, I just want to say thank you for sitting through this whole thing. Hopefully it, uh, it kind of opened up something in you, awakened something in you that says, hey, you know what, I'm tired of wasting my money. I'm tired of being sick. I want to be able to have control of my life, our water, right? I do not want to invest in these companies anymore. I want to be able to move forward in life knowing that we have good, clean water. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Know that these, this investment is just an investment. Once the investment is paid for, you own it after that. That's as simple as that. There's no more having to pay for it except for filters once a year. You can even go over that, right? After that, you own it. And I want people to have ownership. All right, I want him to become an owner, not a loner. All right, so thank you very much for watching this. Reach out to us. Uh, hold on. Will this work with well water? Absolutely. If you have uh, any type of test that you've uh, done with your well water, I suggest finding out what's in it first. Um, high in minerals. Okay, so minerals are good that are in it though. Uh, 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 the simple filter that's in there, as I'm going to say, is just going to be enough. Anybody that has really bad water going into it, we do have pre filters. We work with a company called Ion Faucets. You could definitely look them up. They're our sister company. So for anybody that has really bad water, uh, we do have pre filters as well. If anybody wants to put it under the counter, we do have kits that go with that as well. But again, it's all about um, positioning yourself to be able to have the best quality water, the, 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 the hose that you have, if it needs to be replaced, that means nothing compared to getting this device in your home. Uh, look out for future uh, uh, classes. So Wednesday, Saturday is here at the Honey Tree. If it's on Wednesday, then it's at six o'clock. If it's Saturday, it starts at 11. Look out for uh, August 11th for our cooking demo. Uh, definitely try to come out there. We've been going for, uh, we're, we're going to get shut down in a couple minutes though, but thank you so much for everybody. Uh, I hope I made this very easy for you to understand and uh, try to overcome any objectives that you have. Uh, and that's what we're here for. We did the research for you so you don't have to. So God bless everybody and love conquers all. Thank you so much and have a, have a great day. I think I didn't cancel yet. Don't look up my nose.